appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. You know, uh, for the next few minutes, uh, I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about success. And the main thing, and the reason that people become successful in life is because they realize a few key things. And the reason why people don't become successful is because they miss out on a few different things. And I want to talk about that. See, people that achieve massive success in life, they know that before every great breakthrough, they're going to be challenged with some type of adversity, some type of obstacle, or they're going to be challenged with some type of distraction. How many people would agree with that? Absolutely. All right, because here's the thing. All right, nothing of greatness comes without a fight. Nothing of greatness comes without some type of challenge. All right, and what you have to understand, when you get these attacks, when you get these distractions, all right, all they're meant to do is to throw you off track. But if you appreciate that, and you recognize that, and you embrace that, and you have a strong attitude of, well, wait a second, this might be a clue. Why am I getting attacked? Wait a second, I might be on the verge of a great breakthrough. So here's what I want to do. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about these distractions, how to overcome them, how to recognize them, and have a stronger attitude. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah, you ready? Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. ready. Here's the thing. Number one, before every great attack, or before every great opportunity comes an attack. So when these things start to happen in your life, recognize them. Know that, when, and, and it's funny because I look at every great breakthrough in my life, and I look and I study successful people, and here's what I've learned. In order to get to, you have to go through, and there are no drive-through breakthroughs. Absolutely. All right, so you have to understand. See, everyone looks, see, it took most people their whole life to get them in their current situation. Yet they want a five-minute microwave solution. Listen, in business, in life, in success, it's a journey and it's a process and you have to appreciate that. It's not a drive-through breakthrough, guys. You, you don't just go ahead and, and, and hop in the car, and, you know, go up to the little window and, and have it your way and then check out five minutes later. It doesn't work like that. You're going to be tested and you're going to have to go ahead and appreciate that now up front. So if you guys are ready to start accepting that, let me get an amen. Amen. It's a good church, but I like that for a little bit, all right, because I feel like I'm preaching a little bit because this is something that's so passionate to me because I see it all the time. You get a brand new person. They get excited. They see an opportunity, and then all of a sudden, they get a challenge. See, I can tell almost every single time when I bring someone on board with this business or I share with them an awesome opportunity, something that can take them out of the situation that they're in, and they see it, and then all of a sudden, you wouldn't believe it. They're just about ready to get going, or they do get going, and all of a sudden, problem. Something happens in the family, health situation. You're going to be attacked mentally. You're going to be attacked in every area you can imagine. Physically, look, it might be your health. It might be something to do with your family. But here's what you have to know. You have to know and recognize that this is part of the process. And look at it and say, wait a second, this might be a clue. Because, see, a strong person with a strong mind goes ahead and they just accept, accept that. And they say, you know what? Whoa, wait a second, something must be going on. I need to go ahead and stay focused and buckle in. Because this is the only time the enemy attacks is when you're on the verge of something great. Because it's so easy to get you distracted and thrown off course, is it not? Right. See, sometimes the attacks are big and obvious. Like there'll be something happening in your family, something happening in your health. Sometimes, and most of the time, what I found is it'll just be a form of little distractions. And in life, people let the littlest things get in the way of the biggest opportunities. That's why, you know, if you'll sign somebody up and they get excited, all of a sudden they start saying, oh man, you wouldn't believe what happened. They just put me on overtime, we're short staff, they're cutting down this. So listen, this great opportunity, this great breakthrough opportunity, I'm going to have to put it on the back burner. And they're all saying, you lose. You lose. That's it. You know, all you have to do, all that enemy has to do is get you the cause to put it on the back burner. Mm -hmm. All right, because here's the thing. It's not even an a, a direct attack on your business. It's not even a, a direct attack on you. It's just something enough to cause you to be off track. Because here's the thing. All, it had, all, the, all the enemy has to do is distract you enough to put you, to get you to just delay something. All right, to kill your momentum. Because if you can procrastinate, on moving forward with something big, a big opportunity, well, guess what happens? See, procrastination is the assassination of motivation. Before you know it, it's on the back burner. Before you know it, you've got so many different things that all of a sudden all these things start popping on the radar, and then you get distracted and you get thrown off. So here's what I want to encourage everyone to do. When you see these distractions, when you start to see this, know that this is part of the process. Get excited. Embrace it. Have an attitude of bring it. You can't beat me. See, when, these, when you have that mentality, 
All of a sudden, when you stay focused on the goal, see an obstacle is only something that you see when you take your eyes off the goal. See, it's amazing. If you're thinking that everything in life is going to be smooth sailing, well then guess what? You're not trying for anything big. Because here's what's amazing. I noticed, I was, it's funny, I was watching you know, the, the, uh, you know, the collegiate basketball finals, you know, and I was watching in the game, and it's amazing because every time, or no matter which team it was, every time they went up to line up for a foul shot, guess what's on the side? On one side, you've got a row of people, and on the other side, you've got a row of people, you're standing at the foul shot line, and they're all on their toes, waiting, waiting for you to mess up so they can go ahead and get that ball. Am I right about it? Right. And guess what's behind the goal? A whole, a whole fleet of people in the audience waving, going, ah, trying to distract you so you miss the shot. See, the universe always launches an attack when you're in the middle of something big. And what you just have to know is say, look, champions stay focused on the goal. Champions don't worry about missing the shot. They don't worry about all the noise going on in the background. Champions stay focused on the goal and they sink the shot. So here's what I want you guys to do. When you recognize it and see that these attacks start coming on your business, when they start coming on your team, give everybody the mindset of a bring it attitude. Say, listen, oh, something bad's happened to you? Oh, man, this is excellent. Get excited. Listen, why would something be wanting to stop you if you're not on the verge of something big? See, I can go back 2,000 years and get example out of example out of example from the Bible. I, can, I don't even have to go that far deep. I can look at my team. I can see people, people that I get started that, that get successful, all right? They go ahead and eliminate those excuses. I know Jeremiah Barnett, you know, one of our top executives on the team, you know, when he got started, all right, he had a challenge, he had a dilemma. Because see, people say cute things, don't they? People say things, oh, well, Caesar, I can't go to the event. You know, I can't do the training. Well, you know, that's my family then. You know, they say all these cute things, oh, I just put my family first. Do you really? Because I remember Jeremiah Barnett, when he worked for a job, all right, he had an opportunity all right, it was his son's first birthday came up. And he said, well, he was, he's a very family-oriented person. But that was his reason for doing the business, not his excuse not to do it. So what ended up happening is uh, his son's first birthday came up, and he said, hey, listen, I need off, because he was working a corporate job. And they said, look, you can't have it. And he said, but this is my son's first birthday. He said, yeah, I feel for you as a person, but you know, this is corporate America. You know, and sometimes you've got to go ahead and do this. So it's funny because I hear people use all these distractions and say, oh, listen, I'm going to go ahead and get started with that later on down the road. Let me go ahead and knock this out. I'm in the middle of a move. I'm in the middle of a job change. I'm in the middle of this. I'm in the middle of that. You know, I've got this. I've got that. And you know what? They let those little distractions end up completely taking them out of the game. And it's funny because that, that day he made a decision because he's a family first type of guy. That's why he was doing this business so he can go ahead and retire, be full time, be a stay at home father. That was his goal. Well, that day, he had an option. He could go ahead and put his family first and quit his job, but which really just puts his family second because then he can't provide for him. You know? Or he could go ahead and play ball, play corporate ball, do what he has to do to get it done, suck it up, all right, do his job, but use that as fuel for his fire to, again, fuel his dream and fuel his life. He ended up doing that. He had to go ahead and put his job first. See, a lot of people, they'll put their job first over their business. They'll put all these little things in front of their business, and then all of a sudden, they want their business to pay them more than their job, but they won't give their business the same exact mindset and the same exact determination, the same exact focus as they would a corporate job. Now today, because of that mindset, because of that eliminating excuse mindset, because he didn't want to be a part of the always something club. Y'all know the always something club? And always something going on. Hey, I would do this, but you know what just happened. You know, is it, I got this, I got that. You know, they're just full of excuses. They go, oh, you know, you wouldn't believe my house flooded. Oh, my God, you wouldn't believe my job. That's all I call them the always something club. But you know, if you make a pact right now to never be a part of the always something club, never make excuses, you can do what so many people have done. Jeremiah Barnett was able, he was always a not, he was always the type of person that would never make an excuse. He got in this business. Today he's a stay-at-home father, all right? Lives in a beautiful house, ocean view, gorgeous kind of, three stories. And he's just one of the many stories that we have in this business because he had that mindset. So I want to give you guys the bring it attitude. Everyone say, bring it. Bring it. That's how you got to be if you want to be successful in this business. Get it done.